Hey, dough rollers, welcome back to the channel. So the government released inflation numbers today and they came in a bit lower than the market was expecting. And so the market is cheering that. But it raises a question now, well, where is the best place to keep our cash? So I'm gonna give you a few ideas in today's video. Let me first show you the inflation numbers. This is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and uh, I'll link to everything I show you below the video, but inflation remained at 3.2%. Whoops, there's the number. I don't know if you can read that very well. We'll come down here and actually look at the, the chart. Let me make it a little bigger. So we can see for all items in October, 0.0, .0 month over month increase. So we kept, we stayed at an unadjusted 12 months, 3.2%. Uh, so th that's generally good news, still uh, above what the Fed uh, wants. Uh, but it came in a little better than the market expected. They were expecting a 0.1 increase. Now, one thing I'll point out before we move to maybe the, to some of the best places to keep your cash, you'll notice if you look at the, the individual items, you know, energy was down uh, uh, a lot over the last month, but other things were up. Food was up uh, considerably. Uh, here, it's interesting, used cars and trucks down 0.8%. Uh, but, you know, medical care seems to always be higher than, 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 than the overall inflation rate, 0.4. And I noticed this one down here, transportation services, up 0.8%. And look at it year over year, 9, whoops, 9.2. So, yeah, overall inflation was flat, uh, 3.2 uh, over the last 12 months. And that's, I, I suppose, given where we were, uh, good news. And, in fact, uh, the market was very happy about it. I'm recording this. Uh, late morning uh, on the 14th of November, we can see here the S&P is up 2%, Dow's up just about 1.5%. Look at that, the NASDAQ up 2.3%. And so the market, you know, uh, pretty happy uh, about uh, what's happening in the world of inflation. Basically, they're happy because they're thinking maybe the Fed uh, is done raising rates and who knows, might even start cutting rates at some point in the at least not too distant future, although I'm not holding my breath. So anyway, that's the, the news on inflation, and it raises the question now, where are some of the best places to keep our cash, whether it's for an emergency fund or perhaps you've got a short-term savings goal? And so I want to give you a couple of ideas there. The first thing I want to look at are treasury bills. So uh, this is from the U.S. Treasury Department. Now, this only goes through yesterday, so this would have been before the news on inflation. And what we want to look at is this coupon equivalent number. That's the number you'd want to use if you wanted to compare these to sort of your traditional bonds that pay semi-annual interest. And you can see for a, a one-month T-bill, we're at about 4.4, which is really good, keeping in mind that with Treasury bills like U.S. government bonds generally, they are not subject to state and local income tax. So that 5.4 is really good. I have some money in the 26-week uh, at least at the moment, it's five and a half, which I think is an excellent place to keep short-term cash. Now, keep in mind, just because this is a six, or they call it 26 weeks, but six-month T-bill, if you invest in one of these through your broker, you're not obligated to hold it for, for six months. You can sell it anytime you want. This is not like a traditional bank certificate of deposit where you're sort of locked in unless you want to pay a penalty. However, if interest rates go up between the time you buy it and the time you sell it, say, I don't know, two or three months from now, you could have to sell it at a discount. Now, it's a short-term bond, so the discounts shouldn't be significant, but you need to keep that in mind. Still, I think T-bills are an excellent option for, for short-term cash. I will point out, and this is now, um, I jumped over to CNBC. You can see the rates on these short term, this is starts at one month here and we go down, well, it goes all the way to 30 years, but I'm focused on the short end of the yield curve. They have come down a, a little bit today, again, because of the inflation data, but you know, not a significant drop at all. So I still think that uh, T-bills are an excellent option for short term cash. And I love the tax benefits you get in terms of state and local income tax. But I know a lot of you prefer sort of more of a traditional bank, either a CD or savings account. So I want to show you some options there. Let's first start with short-term certificates of deposit. And we're looking at Raisin. This is a company where you open up an account and you can then direct your money to, they've got dozens of FDIC insured banks and NCUA insured credit unions that you can pick from. And on the short end, 
Uh, Western Alliance has sort of the best rates, as you can see. Uh, there's some that match it. Quantic is another one. But in this five to six month range, you're getting 5.6%, uh, which is an excellent rate. And uh, you know you do have to lock your money in for either, in either five or six months. If you take it out early, there's a penalty. But again, this is really short term. And uh, so I think those are about the best rates that I can find for short term certificates of deposit. Now, if you don't like the idea of paying a penalty, even with a short term CD, but you'd like the flexibility to pull your money out, if you need to, then we can go to the no penalty CDs and I'll show you those. Again, I'll link to everything I'm showing you. This is on my site, one of my sites, Dough Roller. And the one I like the most is at the top of this list. Uh, and it's also from Western Alliance, 5.4%. The reason I like it is it's it, the rate is good for 16 months. So remember how no penalty CDs work. You, you put your money in, you do actually have to keep your money in either for seven or thir 30 days, depending on the terms of the CD. With this Western Alliance, it's 30 days. But after that, you can pull your money out anytime you want without penalty. So given that, you might say, well, why, why does the term matter? It matters because if rates go up and you want to get your money out, no problem. As long as you've had it in there for the seven or 30 days, you pull your money out, no big deal. But let's say rates go down and you love this 5.4% rate because now rates are whatever, 5% or four and a half. Well, you get to enjoy that rate for a full 16 months with this particular CD. If you were to, to let's say, invest in this uh, technology credit union CD, you only get the five, the guarantee of that rate for five months. And most no, no penalty CDs are 11 months or shorter. We, we can look at it here, five, three, four. Here is a 15 months. So that's another good one to consider, although the rate's a tad lower. Uh, six months, nine months. 11 months seems to be a common uh, duration for uh, no penalty CDs. So I'll leave a link to this. Obviously, you can look at all of them. Maybe you'll find something you prefer better. This is the one that stands out for me. Now, uh, if you say, no, I appreciate that, Rob. I just want, you know, a savings account. I want to keep it simple. All right, well, we can look at savings accounts. So uh, here are, you'll find a ton of savings accounts uh, on Dough Roller. Uh, we'd simply rank them by APY. The thing that, and I'm, we're working on changing this page. I don't like the way this page is structured because we need more information about some of these accounts. For example, this this one right here, Elevault, looks good, 5.65%. And it is, except that, it's, it's a mobile banking app only. You can only bank on your mobile app and you have to have an iPhone. And uh, that rate is only good up to 40,000. Now, for some of you, that may be more than enough. But th the point is, you know, there are some hoops you have to jump through. And the way we've got this structured right now, you obviously don't see those details. Now, if you go to the, 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 the website, you'll get all the details. Um, and that's true for all of these. But we are working on changing that and maybe reducing the number of options, but focusing on the ones that we really think are worth considering. Having said all of that, uh, you can see that at the, the top end, if you, I'm going to ignore this one for a moment because it's a, it's a bit of an oddball kind of account. But you can see it's in the 530 to 520 to 540 range seem to be where uh, savings accounts top out at. Now, when you look at these, you may say, Rob, uh, I've never heard of any of these banks. I, I appreciate that maybe... These banks pay higher rates, but you know, I'd be more comfortable with a bank I've heard of. Well, uh, maybe some of you have heard of UFB Direct. So there's one, five and a quarter. Uh, what do we got here? FNBO Direct, 515. CIT Bank, that's a well known one, a large bank, uh, just over 5%. If you want to do an even bigger bank, you're going to have to go into like the 420s and 430s for the most part. Let's see here. Uh, there's, well, there's SoFi at 460. Many of you are familiar with SoFi. Uh, Quantic Bank, uh, that's, most people probably haven't heard of that one. Here we go. So we've got Marcus by Goldman Sachs, 440. Uh, Discover Bank, 435. Barclays, big bank, 435. There's Amex, 430. Capital One, 430. Ally, 425. So, you know, you can get into the 520s, 530s, 540 maybe with the savings account. And, and they're all, they're FDIC or NCUA insured if they're a credit union. So some people don't really care about the brand, but I've talked to a lot of people about banking and a lot of you, and I get this, you know, you kind of do care about the brand and it may not be even so much a fear of losing your money if, if you're under the FDIC uh, limits, because you know, you've got that protection. 
It can be just uh, the mobile app experience. The larger banks have more money to put into their technology. Maybe you want a branch, so a Capital One, for example, which pays a good rate, uh, but you know maybe not above five, but a good rate, and you like the fact that you have branches available to you. So I get that, and um, it's another reason, by the way, we're sort of going to revamp that page. But there you go. Those are the options for savings accounts. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you, the last option is right here. So th this is just one example of a money market fund. Now remember, a money market fund is different than a money market account. A money market account is at a bank. It's basically just like a savings account. There are technical differences, but they're, they're the same if, if, as a practical matter as far as you know we're concerned. Money market funds are not FDIC insured, but they invest in really safe things. In this case, the Fidelity Government Money Market Fund invests in, as the name suggests, uh, short-term government paper. You know, think T-bills, for example. Uh, and I, I just show you this as an example. If I were picking a money market fund, I would generally pick one wherever I had my taxable investment accounts. It could be Vanguard, Schwab, Fidelity. Uh, and um, this one, it just as an example, it's seven-day yield. So it's it's what that means is is, is it's, it's annual yield based on what's happened in the last seven days. If you were to take the last seven days and, and annualize it, the yield is 4.99. The reason they do that, by the way, that, that seven-day yield is because yields fluctuate significantly or, you know, day to day, even throughout the day. And um, so if you look back eight months ago, the yield was, could have been much lower. And so this gives you a better idea of the yield on an annual basis based on what's happening in the market right now. Uh, now, keep in mind, uh, these fluctuate. So you put your money in here, you're not guaranteed 4.99% for any length of time. If you want some sort of guarantee like that, you could invest in a certificate of deposit. Uh, you could invest in uh, a T-bill and, and you would hold it to maturity and you would know, let's go back to the, the rates, for example, if you invested it and had a, a, a coupon equivalent yield of 5.4, you know that's what you'd get if you held it to maturity, right? With this, this is you could almost think of it like a savings account in the sense that the rates can fluctuate day to day. But still, you know, boy, 4%, 4.99% is, is really good. I think this is an ideal place to keep cash that maybe you plan to either uh, spend it soon and you've pulled it out of an investment maybe and it's just sitting there, and that's fine. Or you plan to invest soon and it's just sitting there. You, maybe you're waiting for that great buying opportunity. I don't know. What, however you decide to invest. There's no point you know, pulling it out of the broker and sticking it in a bank only to then two weeks from now pull it out of the bank and put it back into the brokerage account. So these money market funds generally are paying well. You do need to look at the details though because from broker to broker uh, and from fund to fund. And for example, uh, in fact, let me just show you this real quick. Uh, Brokers offer more than one money market fund. I, we were just looking at the, the SPACs, which is one that I own, full disclosure. Uh, it's a, you know, a Fidelity government money market fund. This is just a standard money market fund that's going to invest in a lot of different kinds of short-term uh, 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 paper bonds. Uh, um, and if we look at this, it's actually got a slightly higher yield, 5.08%. You do want to think about tax consequences with the money market, the government money market fund. The tax uh, implications might be different because of what it invests in. Uh, but, the, but the point is, brokers can offer more than one money market fund. They are different in what they invest in, and their yields uh, are different. So we want to make sure if that's the direction you want to head, that you get all the details. So there you go. Uh, hey, if you know of a better place to park cash, would you let us know? Leave a comment uh, below this video. I'd like to collect as much data on this as I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.